Am I using this what's in my gym bag to put off going into the gym? Maybe, probably, possibly. So this goes here. Fuck! <laughs> Am I taking back my de-influencing? If a court of mist and fury was a 10, this was a 20. This is an awful angle for me, but this is a great angle for Moose. <laughs> Good morning! Welcome back to the vlog. <laughs> My dogs are being so incredibly needy right now. It is out of control. Do you have so many eye goobies from your sheep? You've got so many eye goobies. Oh my god. Anyways, good morning. Welcome back to the vlog. Missed y'all. I am headed to the gym. I think today might be almost exactly my halfway point of 75 soft. Today is day 37. And so because 75 doesn't split into two evenly, obviously, Am I mathing this right? I think I am. I think I'm at my halfway point. This has been the longest 37 days of my life. Let me be so clear. <laughs> but it actually has been really, really good. And I've been really happy with the results that I've been seeing. And I feel like I've fallen into routine now. So it's taking less mental toll, I think, to stay consistent. My family has been visiting though. They got here this weekend. It is Thursday today. Um, they are up in Joshua Tree for a few days. And then coming back to spend the weekend again with us before they head back. Hi, puppies. <laughs> Hi, Digo. I know, yes, you too, you too. Digo has been licking his paw, and so we've been trying to keep that from happening with the flower cone. Highly recommend the soft cones for your dogs, especially if you have accident-prone dogs like we do. It's basically like a sleep travel pillow. I'm convinced that he kind of likes it. Yeah. Anyways, today I'm headed to the gym and I wanted to do a what's in my bag video and a what's in my gym bag video because those videos are so nostalgic to me and I want to be part of the movement to bring them back. I was actually looking and watched a few others yesterday to see if other people have been doing them because I've, I've been seeing people be like, let's bring old YouTube back because they're just so... There you go. Don't sit on your brother. <laughs> I've been seeing other people feel the same way that like they miss some of the nostalgic bits. And let me be very clear. We are not bringing back all of old YouTube. There are just a few, I feel like video formats that are just so nostalgic for whatever reason. So anyways, um, I thought that on the way home from the gym, we could do a what's in my gym bag. And then later on, like a what's in my purse, more specifically my day to day purse. And overall, I'm gonna bring you along for the entire day today. I made some more wedding decisions, have things to show you, have things to tell you i feel like when i haven't vlogged in a few days i i start making like was that a yawn or a burp <laughs> I start making a mental tally of the things that I have to catch up with you guys on. So that is the plan for today. I got some new gym shoes. I've been rotating through gym shoes quite frequently and I forget the, I'll, I'll pop a screenshot on screen of the exact model and type, but they're so cute. Let's see, what's the least awkward way to show the shoe? Okay, ready? Cute, cute, right? This is truly a, a uh, test of leg strength as well happening on the other side. They're an Air Max, forget what number. And also I don't wear shoes in the house. Obviously you know that about me, but this is my first day wearing them. So uh, they are completely clean and this will be the one and only day that they get worn in the house for this quick moment as we start the vlog and get ready to depart for the gym. Okay, needy boys, it's time for me to go. Um, will you be okay? <laughs> will you be okay without me for an hour? Yeah, okay. Goodbye. Bless you. That was such a big sneeze. Ah, it is 46 degrees. <laughs> and listen, that's like really not that cold again. I know I'm just being a baby, but I'm just not dressed for 46 degrees is the problem. You saw my bare ass legs right now. I'm not dressed for 46 degrees and I didn't pre-warm my car. Uh, anyways, LA just got so much freaking rain. Holy shit. I don't think that I've seen this much rain in LA since maybe, honestly, this time last year, in February of last year. It also shitted rain for like four days. Again, like, 
grew up Canadian. A, a little a little bit of rain, even a lot of bit of rain is not that big of a deal. But the way that this city is not built to dispose of rain or move rain water away from like, especially low areas of the city quickly is crazy. I took a video from the gym the other day. I think it was Monday morning. So it would have only been raining for like 24 hours. And you can see how fast that nasty ass water is moving. Holy shit. I posted that on Instagram and someone responded with like forbidden chocolate milk and a few replies about it looking like the Willy Wonka chocolate milk river. I can assure you it would not taste like the Willy Wonka chocolate river. It was nasty because usually the LA river has nothing in it. Just like poo poo and pee pee and probably some drugs and then when it rains it all gets flushed out and it is not it is not a pretty sight so today is the first day that the sun is back out shining and i am so grateful would i like it to be a little warmer yes of course but i'll be okay but the way that i got into the car and was shocked at the 46 degrees that was showing on on my screen right now ah, God! okay let's go let's go let's go Am I using this what's in my gym bag to put off going into the gym? Maybe, probably, possibly. My freaking butt cheeks are sore from Pilates. Literally, still so many, let's see, how many, I think I think my Pilates app tells me exactly how many classes I've done. It's definitely getting easier. I'm, I'm less sore. I used to not be able to walk for like multiple days after Pilates classes, and now they'll usually just be like one or two specific muscles of targeted areas. 21 classes! 21 classes is how long it took me to be able to walk the next day. <sighs> 21 classes. Jesus. Jesus. And then I've got three more booked, one for tomorrow, Tuesday, and then next week again as well too. Anyways, I love it. I really do. I, I truly have such a great relationship with Pilates and I'm so excited about how much I've been enjoying it. Anyways, let's get into a what's in my gym bag. I will leave exact product names, etc., for everything that I can't remember the name of, but I love my gym bag so much. It is so cute and little and compact. It it is from the brand Dagny Dover. This is hands down my favorite color. I have that like puffy pillow bag that's also in this same color and a water bottle and it is, it is my favorite color. I don't know if it's periwinkle or what it is, but it is my favorite color by far. So I don't shower at the gym and obviously that is going to make such a huge difference in how many things you need to bring to the gym and how big your gym bag has to be to go to the gym. So if you're a girly like me who's just kind of like in and out and has a few things in the gym bag and just need something like cute and compact, highly recommend this is such a great bag it is so well made and i had just like a shitty one for so long i rotated through just like canvas tote bags and i don't know just like something about this one is just the structure is so nice and there's still so many like pockets and great places to put things where i still feel like it holds a lot it's kind of a mary poppins bag to be honest okay here she is we've got this little tab at the top here to close this a chunky zipper there's something so much more satisfying about a chunky zipper tell me why that is oh my god and then obviously it's got like the main full-size strap okay so number one um i always just toss my wallet in here obviously so that i'm driving with my license if you don't have a tile or any of like the trackable things inside your purse i highly recommend for this to be your sign to add one of these to your wallet or your purse or your gym bag and all of your valuables the amount of times that i have lost my wallet within the house and this is just like a tracker card so same thing as an air tag but like in the shape of a credit card or whatever and it just goes into my wallet and it makes a sound too so you can track it the amount of times that that card has saved my ass because i can see that my wallet is somewhere in the house but i can't find it if this is your sign please take it truly a godsend okay so that's the first thing and the other thing is like i switch my wallet from so many different bags just like even on a daily basis from my gym bag to like my day-to-day -day purse because obviously it's got my license and like my credit cards and stuff in it so Anyways, next thing I've got are my AirPods. Highly recommend on the new ones. There's this little tiny thing on the side here and you can add a strap. Getting this in and out of my gym bag now that I have a strap is literally the best. Yesterday for my workout, my case said that the AirPods were charged, but they were in fact only half charged. And by half charged, I mean only one was charged. So I had a really weirdly 
imbalanced workout where one AirPod had like the noise cancellation and the other one that did not. It was very, very odd. This is what I mean about this being a Mary Poppins bag kind of like, this fits a whole freaking water bottle. It is very empty because normally I just drink from the water fountain and then I have an energy drink so that I don't have to carry around multiple beverages. I also have been drinking so many of these and by so many of these, I mean like one a day, but it's the Marquis uh, Tri Blend Caffeine Yerba Mate Green Coffee and Green Tea. It's only 100 milligrams of caffeine, which I feel like makes me a little bit less squirrely, which is nice. So normally I have this in the gym and then um, I've got my water bottle if I need it. But usually like if I'm drinking water, I've got like my big one, my Stanley, or an energy drink. Okay, next I have a few little snackies. This is my favorite protein bar right now. This is from Bear Bells. It's the Salty Peanut. 20 grams of protein. Bitch, throwing it around. The way that this tastes like a Snickers bar, my God. Oh my God, delicious. Literally this one and the crispy crunch flavor. It's got the blue wrapper. Chef's Kisses, the best protein bars I've ever had. I feel like I'm really, like I have a really, really picky protein palette. Like if I can taste the whey in something and I've got, it's got that like chalky powdery feel. I don't know, I've got like a really low tolerance, I guess for protein based things. This is a, just a chocolate bar. This is just a chocolate bar. And then I always see the gym girlies talking about needing like a sugary, sour, like candy for a pump. Let's be so real here. I'm not working out to the point where I need to revive myself with a sugary snack, but I do have the Alani watermelon gummies in here. These are more just like our funsies, if we're being honest. When I work out with Mia, my other friends, Jake and Tracy, I feel like we just kind of share these because these are delicious, but these are them. I want to give you a warning that this has 36% of your daily fiber intake. And so depending on how your body reacts to high fiber foods just uh, a warning a warning okay because some people don't realize so I just want to put that out there okay so we've got the snack category and then the mini pharmacy portion because you know I stay strapped with freaking Tums and stuff I actually don't have an Advil I usually keep those like single serving Advils in here but I think I may have taken the last one but there's just like nothing worse than getting to the gym and not feeling great and not having just like something that can fix it so easily so I've got a little roll of Tums because bitch working out with acid reflux is not it it is absolutely not it I let it happen to me one time and I was like no never again so I stay strapped with Tums and then I usually have the single serving Advil pouch I've got some Aquaphor, the mini lip balm, and then I've also got a tampon because because you just never know. And then, again, Mary Poppins bag, I swear, we, we keep going. These are the only two pieces of like actual gym equipment or accessories that I really keep in my gym bag. So I've got workout gloves and I should probably get some new ones because these are getting a little crusty. They are very much machine washable. They could stand to be washed a little more frequently, but they are from the brand Harbinger and this is what they look like. I just like don't, my hands are on camera so much that like I know that some people really enjoy building up the calluses from weightlifting, but girl, that ain't me. It just ain't, and it's just not in the cards. So gloves, got my little workout gloves. And then I attribute so much of my butt growth to doing glute kickbacks. So these are ankle straps. And so essentially on the cables, you add tension and weight, and that is how you grow a booty. So I've got these, these are the ankle straps, one for each side, and these are from the brand Gym Reapers. This is so violent, Gym Reapers. So anyways, all of that stays in my gym bag pretty much consistently and that's pretty much it i try to keep it clean i would say that like consistently that is kind of it there's also a little open pocket at the what is this tesla key card and then this little open pocket at the back here the parking situation at my gym you have to like take a ticket so i always just like keep the ticket in here which is like a nice easy access pocket so that's it um i feel like the other thing to mention is that like it's definitely the right width to fit a, this is the, whatever the, is the, is the new phone the 15 or the 14? 
I think it's the 15. What fucking phone do I have? I don't know. Anyways, the length of this bag is perfect to fit a phone, a mini water bottle, and then also, obviously, I this is open, so I can't put this in here, but it is the proper length for any kind of like Alani New or energy drink size can if you do want to put it in here. And because it's like the perfect width, like everything, it, it truly is a Mary Poppins bag, I swear. Like, are you going to get a pair of shoes in here? No, probably not. But this is not the right gym bag if you are doing like a full everything shower after you work out which i am now going to go do okay we've prolonged it long enough there's a quick what's in my gym bag and i will see you after the workout hello home from the gym oh my god hot coffee beverage oh, so nice oh my god the best also if you don't have an insulated coffee cup like that has the metal insides holy shit it makes such a big difference this is the other reason why i only drink 100 milligrams like that's why those marquee drinks are so great because i feel like if i were to do a 200 milligram like alani new or celsius and then drink a coffee when i got home i would be cracked on a different planet and so anyways it's a good balance because i like having a coffee when i get home to just like keep me going because i feel like the energy drink gets me through my workout and then now i'm like i could take a nap so anyways eating lunch i've got well it doesn't look very cute because i just cut it up but i do my meal prep through 80 percent nutrition and it was egg bites and potatoes, but they are cut up into little bite-sized pieces so it would cool down after I brought it out of the microwave. So I've been making wedding decisions. We are getting so crazy close and I'm losing my goddamn mind. Oh my God, my planner has done such an incredible job at giving us tasks in bite-sized pieces, but man, the decisions that you have to start making in the last couple of months, like it is go time. So some of the things I'm so excited to show you, oh my God, the cocktail napkins. So Moose and Diggy are able to be at the wedding for the ceremony. They're able to be there for the photos beforehand. They're able to be there for cocktail hour. And then within my wedding planners, services they have a doggy concierge package where essentially they'll have one of their like production assistants stay with the dogs the entire time and then whenever you want them to go home they will literally drive them to your house and stay at your house with them and keep them company until you come home which is incredible and i think also the package was like maybe 200 dollars. and in the grand scheme of how much anything in relation to wedding things cost like 200 dollars for our dogs to have their own like handlers throughout the entire evening like that is the best 200 dollars i will ever spend where was i going with this oh all right so they're able to be at the wedding because obviously i birthed both of them out of my womb but we also are gonna have a few cute moose and diggy nods in the decor so the cocktail napkins I custom designed. I'll pop a photo on screen. Um, so I just sent them to print. We originally, um, my planner said I only needed 200, but I ordered 250 because I want the extras. And I think the cost of it only came out to $120 or something. So for 250 custom holographic printed napkins of Moose and Diggy, money well spent. Money, truly, I work hard so I can have custom cocktail napkins at my wedding of our dogs, essentially is what I'm saying. The other thing that I, this is what's so hard about like getting a meal ready is that like, I don't want to put food in my mouth and then talk with food in my mouth. Like that's just not cute. The other thing that I have been organizing and planning is what to do with my bouquet after um, the wedding, because like you need to have a plan in place for immediately after, because if you have fresh flowers, obviously they only last a few days. So if you have to send them somewhere, that's just gotta be done ASAP. So I've been weighing my options and I'm gonna be working with pressed floral. They're based in Utah and and I'm deciding, I can't decide. <sighs> Let me know which one you guys like better. So essentially my two options that I'm kind of stuck between are the, and I'll pop them up on screen so you can see what I'm looking at, is the one where it's kind of spaced and like spread out and each flower you can very much like uniquely see or the more traditional style where it's like the pressed bouquet. Also, is it bouquet or bouquet? I feel like I get roasted online anytime I say either. And so fucking, I don't know, I don't know, okay? My my bunch of flowers that I'm gonna hold in my hand. So I'm deciding between, oh God, I can't. There's just like something so unique about the spaced one and where like each flower really gets its moment. But then I also love how classic the pressed flat one is. 
I think I want to do it on a white background with a white frame um, regardless. The gold frame does look really cute though, the kind of ornate one. That is really pretty. But yeah, I think I want to do it pressed on a white background regardless of which design we want. So anyways, let me know which one you like better. Maybe, cause maybe I've been looking at them for too long. I don't know. Ah, fuck. I'm literally, I've been looking at it all morning and I can't decide which one I like best. So anyways, I'm working with them and they said that they would get a whole bunch of behind the scenes footage once I send them my um, bouquet and they'll show the whole process. So in vlogs to come after the wedding, they are ever so kind and we'll be getting all of the behind the scenes so we can see exactly how they go from being a live fresh bouquet to a pressed forever piece of art. And I'm so excited. Other decisions, I have my welcome party dress. I have my welcome party shoes. I got my second look veil in the mail and I'm still waiting on my first look veil, second option possibility. So we'll see. We're deciding right now um, all of like our song choices. So like what you wanna walk down the aisle to, what you wanna have your grand entrance to, what you want to exit the evening with. Like the amount of small decisions that we have to make is, I, I genuinely, I wanna give a shout out to all the brides who are planning their wedding without a planner because goddamn more power to you. I don't know how you are doing it. Holy shit, like this could be a full-time job. Genuinely planning a wedding could be a full-time job. And I can't imagine not having an amazing planner and just acknowledging my privilege right now because holy shit, there is so much that goes into it and I am so grateful. I'm so grateful to have a planner to help manage the logistics. Okay, I'm gonna eat my lunch before it gets cold and then I can't decide if I wanna put makeup on today. I don't know, we'll see. I ordered magnetic lashes. They went viral on TikTok and I saw Ashley and McDonald try them and she said that they were not heavy. And so I'm so excited to give a full review. I feel like I've tried so many different types of lashes at this point. I've tried magnetic and personally I have not been a fan. I've done obviously extensions. I've done DIY extensions. I've done the strip lash. I've done the semi, what feels like semi-permanent um, at home cluster lashes. And so anyways, I feel like I've really, really covered all ground in relation to lashes. So I'm so excited to give an honest review of these magnetic lashes. I wasn't sure if this was an ugly sweater and I think that I'm confirming that it is. <laughs> Wait, okay, wait, hang on, hang on. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's like cropped and it's like cute and fitted really well, but it's just a lot of bows and they're really big. I also have a bow necklace. Like, yeah, this is ugly, this is ugly, this is ugly. Okay, we're gonna take it off, I'm gonna take it off. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go find something else. Oh yeah, this is not cute. Oh, it's not, it's not. Is it? No, I don't think it is. No, it's not, it's not, it's not. Okay, I'm gonna get changed. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so sorry that we had to struggle through that together. <laughs> you had to see that. <laughs> I have so many lashes to show you. I have a new favorite lash. This is the Ardell Faux Mink Wispies, uh, the Demi Wispies. I will leave them linked. They have an invisible band and I ordered 16 of them because they are my favorite. And my makeup artist, Eros, put them on me for the not shoot the other day. And I was like, oh, where have these been my entire life? I have a whole drawer of lashes that I fucking hate and I love these. And they are the perfect amount of volume, but not like crazy. That makes sense. Ordered four packs of these. They're all right here. And then I also got a PR package from Velour Lashes, which I have never tried before and I'm very excited. So they sent four sets of lashes and these are beautiful. This is the Minimalist. These are pretty. They're very pretty. Uh, this one is called Stripped. And if you can see the inner corners of this one are way more subtle than the outer corners. So if that's something that you are looking for, that's really pretty and subtle. These ones are the Sweetheart. These ones are really short and they are specifically for people whose lashes smack up against their glasses, which is truly a niche that I feel like needed addressing. And so shout out Velour, that's bomb. I think these ones are probably the closest to what I typically wear. These are, I can't find the name. Can you find the name? Mm -hmm. 
this is what they look like. And they honestly are very similar to the Demi Wispies, um, but I do think that they have a thicker band. So we'll see, but very like fluffy and still long. Fuck, I'm so scared to try these magnetic ones. Okay, so this is, I haven't, everything's literally still got its like seals on it. So this is real time first reaction. So this may be a little clunky as I try this for the first time. I'm so curious to see how these go on because I just feel like in my experience, magnetic lashes are nearly impossible to make look good and not have the band be so thick because like the magnets have to go somewhere. So I'm, did I just throw a lash? Did I literally just launch a lash onto myself? Because there were two and now there's only one. Is it in my hair? Oh, this is going swimmingly to start. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Flash down. Flash down. Oh, wait, hang on. What's going on here? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I thought that this was, obviously this makes so much more sense. They're already magneted, ma magneted, magneted together. That is actually quite thin. Let me see if I can, let me, I will insert a close up so you can see exactly how thin they look. But I mean, you can definitely still see the actual magnet. I mean, maybe if you had a thick black liner on, you wouldn't be able to see it. I don't know, I'm so interested. Okay, I'm gonna watch some of their TikToks, but you also have this contraption, which definitely looks like like a medieval torture device and do we know up no wait down no okay this is the side oh my god and then i'm gonna go ah! scary 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 like this okay 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 oh guys i don't know i'm more scared about the clamp situation okay so you peel them apart oh god oh fuck fuck and then you line up the little blue dot is this right? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Getting this part to just like snap into place, that was really, really easy. Okay, there you go. You can totally see like the detail of the lash itself. Oh my God. Oh, I'm scared. Okay. Oh shit. Here we go. Okay. 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 <laughs> so this goes here. Fuck. <laughs> this shouldn't be any scarier than like curling a lash, but for some reason. What, okay, what? Oh, do I have these on the wrong? Oh, why is this so hard? Okay, I think I've got it this time. So here, okay, let go. Oh, oh, it's on. Oh, oh, wait a damn minute. Hang on, wait, hang on, hang on. What is happening? Okay, I can do a better job getting closer to the root and also I've got I've got like excess space over here Like they're too close to my inner corner, but also I usually have to trim off a decent. Okay Let's see what happens when you pull them off. Oh, that was not too bad I usually have to trim off like a decent little section of regular lashes So I'm shocked that these kind of feel a little short to be honest because I feel like I've got kind of small eyes Okay, one more time Oh, I clamped a bottom lash in there Huh, huh. I'm gonna be so real with you. I'm quite impressed. Okay, so there's what it looks like. Hmm. I do still feel like it's a little short. Like I wish I had a little more in the inner corner. And I don't know if you can see, but my natural lashes are like extended past the point of the last outer lash. So I definitely feel like I need like a little more in here, but Wow, they feel really good. I still feel like I can get closer to the lash line. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna go one more time, both eyes, and we'll see how we feel about this. Baby, we are in business. I've got the light leaning towards me so we can really see, and I'm so sorry for the skin close up. You know what, actually, no, I'm not. My skin is really not that bad right now. And even if it was, whatever, this is the vlog channel. Listen, would a strong gust of wind probably separate these and blow them right off and your $60 would go flying down the road? Probably. So I'm here to de-influence you that I don't think that you should buy these, but if you did get influenced and they're already en route, en route, then I am kind of impressed. I really am. And I've gotten a lot bolder now in putting them on. If you had to slap a lash on real quick, I really don't think that this is the worst lash that you could do. I also think that if you were wearing black eyeliner, that this 
could look really natural. I do wish they were a little bit longer and I kind of feel like they don't have a specified inner and outer corner, which I feel like could make these a little better. But yeah, I wish they were a little bit longer and I wish there was a specific inner and outer corner and maybe I'm just stupid, but I'm pretty sure they didn't. Oh, they did specify. They did specify. Okay, got it. Got it, got it, got it. So these could be on the wrong eye, but I kind of don't think they are. I feel like it's very symmetrical on both like this side and this side. My like waterline, my like tight, I, I desperately need to tight line underneath, but they feel really good. I'm gonna be so like, that's one thing that I really do think that these have going. Like it, it kind of is magic. Like they feel better than a strip lash. They feel better than like the week long extensions that you can glue on. They feel good and they come off so easily. I just don't know how strong they would be against the elements, if that makes sense. Oh, you know what? Looking from the side, I'm like, oh, this bitch is so far off my root. That's the only problem is that I feel like because you are at the, the mercy of this shape, for getting them on. And I'm learning that my natural like lash line is not this exact shape. This side is better than this side at the root, but you're, you're really at the mercy of the shape of this little tool for getting them on. I don't know, save your money. Save your money, folks. Here to tell you, I'll take one for the team and de-influence. Better than I thought they were gonna be though, honestly. That's how easy they come off too, is that it feels like nothing, like literally nothing. Okay, to be so honest with you, okay, this is a velour strip lash. The one that I said was like the closest to my typical fave style, like the fluffy. And then this is the magnetic lash. Now that I have a little tight line situation and a little eyeliner and a full face of makeup, I like it more now than I did before. And I like the style. I do still wish it was a little bit longer, but truly, I am quite impressed. Okay, there's the close-up of both of them. Wow! Am I un-de-influencing? Am I taking back my de-influencing? Because that looks good. Shit, maybe I am. I think I'm taking it back. I think I am. I like it. This one's already glued on, so I am gonna match this one, but like, that's solid. That is a solid lash. I am impressed. Okay, finished getting ready. Committed to two of the same lashes that look really good. Honestly, they're so fluffy that they almost are like a shadow of a lash. Anyways, uh, moving on to the what's in my purse segment. I have loved these videos for so long. I think because one, I'm a nosy bitch. And two, I also love being resourceful. Res resourceful? Jeremy says that I say resourceful with a Z, which I, I'm realizing now that I do. And I don't know if it's a Canadian thing or just a me thing. I think it might just be a me thing. So resourceful. Every fiber in my being wants to say resourceful though. So anyways, I love being prepared. I love being resourceful. And I love feeling like I have everything I need plus some. I'm an anxious person, obviously. We very much know that. And so I think that the contents of my purse are a direct reflection of feeling a level of safety and security when I feel prepared, I guess. Or just when like, I have remedies for things that may arise and make me stressed and or anxious or even like just be helpful for someone else is always so nice. So anyways, I've got two everyday purses that I kind of just like go back and forth and alternate depending on the vibe of the outfit. But I would say this uh, Prada bag is my everyday purse for the most part. This was an impulse decision that I made last year at some point. It's got this cute little attachment up here. I saw Claudia Saluski wearing it and I was like, oh shit, that's a really cute shape. I've never had a purse that is a triangle and I was like, oh, this is really cute. It's also, again, kind of like Mary Poppins vibes. Like she holds quite a bit. You can see like the, the thickness of the width here or like the depth of the bag holds way more than you would anticipate. Because one of my number one things that I immediately feel anxious about if I don't have is water. And so obviously, 
we're not gonna fit like a whole last water bottle. But I do usually have a little mini guy. This one has really been through it, but it's like one of those little mini half size or even like quarter size water bottles that I always have in my bag. And it fits between this one and my other everyday bag, which is, the oh God, almost just dumped the whole contents onto the floor. Perfect, great start. This is my other everyday bag. She's so cute. I bought this one in December and everyone is always fighting and people stay fighting about how to pronounce this brand. And so I'm gonna do an awful job and give you my best attempt at Jacques Mousse. And that is my best attempt and the only time you'll ever catch me saying it. But super cute. And again, I love a bag that's got some depth and width. Like I don't want a mini bag that can't hold anything. I refuse to spend money on a bag that can't hold shit. So anyways, this one is a little bit smaller for sure, but it is just very, very cute. And I love the fuzzy trim of this one. So this is like my lighter color neutral bag. And this is my black purse. So item number one, always have a little mini water. It fits in both bags. I think the other one is a little bit smaller. And so that's why she's looking a little busted and crusted right now because <laughs> the label is peeled off and she's just a mess. But again, I don't know what it is with my anxiety, but for some reason, just like not having water, I think it's, it's very much tied to emetophobia, but gotta have water. And then again, you know, I why can I not hold on to a single thing today? You know, you know I stay strapped with the bear bells. Again, so good. I just ordered two boxes of these right now, so that's why they are actively spread across all bags. Again, best flavor. Already said it. Wallet, and I very much transitioned over to a much smaller card holder wallet over recent years, and it honestly is just so nice. I only really keep my essentials for the most part, and I feel like so much has gone digital that it is so amazing to just like have my phone and Apple Pay and even even like things like my health card now are digitized just like in my Apple wallet thingy or whatever. So I really just have like my license, again, that little tracker card, my debit card, credit card, and my Costco card, honestly, those are my key cards. And then the, the key card for my car as well too, in case I don't have my phone on me. So that's what's in my wallet and it's very cute. I don't know what's going on with this foil up here, the top on the back, but it is an off-white wallet. And then I have, okay, this is, the biggest game changer that you don't know you need until it is too late. So if you have acrylics or gel X or just like relatively long nails, it's literally the most debilitating feeling when you can't pay for your own parking because your nails are too long to pull the card out of the little pay meter. It is the absolute worst. And it's such a niche and awful situation to be in when you have to go ask a stranger to be like, hey, I'm so sorry. Can you help me get my car to this reader? And it's not because it's stuck. It's because your nails are just a little too long. So anyways, you can get these on Amazon. It literally is just like a card grabber. And I cannot tell you how many times this thing has saved my life. When, when this happened to me, it, it scarred me and I ordered five. There's one in my car, one in Jeremy's car, one in every purse. Truly, if you're a long nail girly, you need this and you'll be so grateful for the day when the nails are just a little bit too long and you've waited a little bit too long to go to your next appointment to get them redone and you can't pull your card out of the fucking parking meter. There is nothing more humbling. And then I usually keep some lash glue in my bag. My favorite lash glue is the House of Lashes lash glue. Um, Remy put me onto this one and she's just a little, little tiny thing. And so I usually have this, um, I feel like I've got greasy eyelids. And so the inner corners of my lashes stay popping off and like not in a good way, not in a cute popping off way. And like uh, uh, they are coming off and it's not, uh, it's not a good look. So I usually try and keep lash glue to avoid a lash mishap. My second pair of AirPods, these kind of flow throughout like the house or a purse, depending on if I need AirPods and they, they have a little sticker on them, a little Sumiko Garashi um, sticker. Jeremy and I, just between the two of us, have a few pairs of AirPods. And so to distinguish them, got a little sticker on her. Here is the assortment of meds that I usually have. It's not anything too crazy. We've got lactate, 
obviously, for, you know, if you if you know, you know. The little single serving size of Advil, nice and flat, so you don't have to carry around the whole bottle, and then some Pepto. And I don't usually, <laughs> like this one has really been through it, which is great, because I haven't had to take Pepto in so long, but like this middle one is really out here looking mangled as hell. I don't love the chew ones. They also turn your tongue black and also your poop black, which is unexpected. First time that you ever take Pepto and quite shocking and alarming. Normally I just take the ones that you swallow, but these are better again to just be like a flat situation to have all three stacked, my Advil, my lactate and my Pepto, like that is so tiny, but it gives me such peace of mind knowing that I can solve my most common problems with one little pill or chewable tablet. And then Aquaphor, again, this is the only um, lip ointment balm that I use. This little mini guy, again, I just buy these in bulk and put them all over the house, in all the bags, in all the luggage, in all the backpacks, in all of the rooms, essentially. And then the last thing at the very, very bottom, Jeremy has helped me so much with this, is a tile tracker. So it's actually like fully attached to the bottom of the bag so I don't lose it, so it can like never fall out. And again, this has been so incredibly helpful so many times. I'm pretty good now that we have those built-in cabinets installed where as soon as I come home, everything just goes back into those cabinets. But there are some times where I am not the most responsible and have misplaced for a short period of time some of my belongings and having a tracker on them is so key. So again, that maybe this is your sign that you also need trackers and shit in your shit. Trackers and shit in your shit. You heard it here first. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't like having a giant bag and I try to keep everything pretty neat and tidy. I feel like I definitely have been through so many phases where I had just like receipts flowing from every freaking pocket, but I like being able to close my bag and find shit and not have like trash at the bottom of my bag. So I try to keep it pretty contained and casual. Okay, there are my two bags and that concludes our segment of what is in my purse. Okay, I'm gonna film some TikToks. I've got some boring emails to answer and we shall move onward with our day. Oh my God, I have so many Akatar updates for y'all. I forgot that the last time we've spoke since the last vlog, I have finished two more books. I finished A Court of War and Ruins and I also finished the holiday special, A Court of... Fuck, what's it called? The fourth book, 3.5, the holiday special, the little holiday novella, if you will. So anyways, I am officially on the last book, A Court of Silver Flames, and we will do a full debrief later on when I pick up the book again this evening. Y'all told me I was gonna like this one. I did. I loved it. Best book I've ever read in my entire life. No one prepared me for how much I would like this one. What the shit? If A Court of Mist and Fury was a 10, this was a 20. My heart was falling out of my ass. The entire, like the last 25%. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. No one prepared me, no one prepared me, no one prepared me. This is the best book I've ever read. I thought that was the best book I've ever read. This is the best book I've ever read by far. My God, holy shit. And then I started and finished this one in the same day. I, I honestly have 75 Soft to thank for being able to read as much as I have been. It also, again, shitted rain on LA for like five days straight. So we were basically stuck inside with like not that much to do. Anyways, I literally started and ended this one in the same day. It was incredible. It was so cute. It was it was very wholesome. I mean, after the ending of this one, I needed something to calm my life down, and this was this was perfect. This is exactly what I needed. And now, I mean, look at this bitch. This might be the biggest book that I've ever read. And like, I thought uh, A Court of Wings and Ruin was gonna be a thicky, but like A Court of Silver Flames. She wins, she wins for sure. How many pages is this actually? I'm scared I'm gonna read something that I don't wanna see. 751, didn't read anything. 751 pages. I am 32 pages in. And also yes, I dog ear my pages. Please do not come for me. Again, I buy my books so that I can live my life the way that I want to live it, okay? I feel like it's similar to shoes. Like when people are like, why are you wearing those nice shoes somewhere? I'm like, bitch, because I bought them to wear them. Please, let me live. And so anyways, again, 
Please let me live and don't shame me for the dog-eared pages, okay? As soon as I finish this book, it's just gonna go back on the shelf and it'll probably get loaned out to friends and they will survive with the flattened out dog-eared pages that had been dog-eared at some point and everyone will be okay. That's the Akatar update. I am living, I am living for all of the TikToks and the fan art. I am fully on Akatar TikTok. There was one main spoiler that I won't give any spoilers because I. I have enjoyed this series so much without any spoilers and I want you to also like have that same experience if you have not read these. I also feel so lucky that I'm able to read all five of these basically in one sitting. It's so torturous to have to wait years and years between books. I know there's a sixth book coming. Some people refer to this one as like 3.5, but I feel like that just makes it kind of confusing. It, it, it is 3.5 vibes, don't get me wrong, but like for book six to come out, we can't call that book 5.5, like that's fucking confusing. So I'm very excited for book six to come out. God, this is the best series. I expected to like it. Obviously it's gotta be good if this many people are obsessed with it, but bitch, I was not ready. I was not prepared. I was not prepared emotionally, physically, or mentally. And so anyways, now we're here. Jeremy, I think is out for the evening. And so I will be sitting right here and my light just died, perfect. Okay, well, that is my cue to um, continue on my reading journey. Goodbye. Sir. <laughs> Your breath be stanky. Your breath be stanky. That was a very nice yawn, though. That was a very nice yawn. Oh, God, you... That was direct contact with the tongue by accident. Oh, the hardest part of the night is when... Oh, God, you just st breathed and spit at the same time at the end of that yawn right into my eyeball. <laughs> The hardest part of the night is when I don't have my steps done by time it is evening and I'm like, fuck, it's almost freaking eight o'clock and I gotta go do my, my, you have done nothing but sleep all day. What could you possibly be so tired from? Anyways, I've gotta, I've gotta do my treadmill walkie, which is fine. Cause that just means more reading time. Look at this dog's face right now. This is an awful angle for me, but this is a great angle for Moose. <laughs> so handsome. Anyways, it's time to go do the treadmill walkie walk and it is taking every fiber in my being to get out of the heated blanket and the couch snuggle that I have going on right now with this one. Um, also, I made Moose and Diggy a TikTok. Wow, another huge yawn. <laughs> His face. <laughs> God, I fucking love Bull Terriers so much. I just love them. I just love them. I made Moose and Diggy a TikTok because I feel like there's so many like dumb ones that I want to post and do, but don't necessarily want to post onto the main account. So anyways, go follow Moose and Diggy on TikTok. It's your fave meatballs <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for right now. Wow, Moose, you've never looked cuter and your breath has never been stankier, but I do love you so much. Like, look what I have to leave right now. I've got Moose right here. Also, the couch is just in complete disarray. There was a whole bunch of zoomies and blankets and squishmallows flying in every direction. So it, it's an absolute disaster. And then I've got Diggo over here, who's never been cuter. Like, are you kidding? This is what I have to leave to go walk? Hello, I survived the treadmill. Truly, like it goes by so much faster when I am reading freaking Akatar versus watching a show. It is crazy. And I feel like I can really only walk at a 2.7 speed while reading and watching a show, I can definitely do like a solid three, maybe even like a 3.2, but the time just flies by, truly flies by. I wanted to show you my go-to nighttime snack. You guys know that I am a snacky bitch and I, part of the 75 hard is to try to cut back on junk food. And this has been my absolute go-to even before. Also I said 75 hard, by 75 hard I mean 75 soft. I wanna be so clear because the girlies who are doing 75 hard, I am thinking of you and your souls. Okay, so what you're gonna do, cut up an apple. This is also not groundbreaking, I wanna be so clear. This is not groundbreaking whatsoever. You're gonna slice up an apple into lots of little pieces, you can see lots of little pieces because I don't want, like if I'm tracking any of your macros or whatever, like, and I only can have X amount of calories, X amount of carb, protein, whatever, fat. I don't want to eat six pieces of popcorn. I don't want to have one and a half cookies. I want to eat a shit ton of food. And this is how I do that. Okay, so apple, cut it up. A shit ton of cinnamon, sprinkle, said cinnamon, 
on. Oh fuck, don't spill said cinnamon. Jesus, I am chaos right now. Okay, star. Again, this is not groundbreaking. It is just delicious. And every time I eat it, and I'm so sad when it ends. And then granola of your choice on top. Okay, now into the microwave for two and a half minutes. This is what it looks like. This is the granola that I'm using. It's the Kind Healthy Grains Oats and Honey Granola with toasted coconut. But you would not believe how hard it is to find a granola that does not have almonds in it. Being allergic to almonds, especially raw of like the raw variety, Oh my God, the granola <laughs> options are so incredibly limited, but this one is really good. I like this one a lot. Basically we're making a, <sighs> see like, is it offensive to even call it an apple crisp because it's just obviously not and it's 98% apple, I don't know. But the magic ingredient at the end of all of this is the, oh God, oh, there's a dog down here. Is the, is the uh, zero sugar keto friendly ready whip that I put on top, bitch. I'd be eating this by the, the, like the, the best, the absolute best. So then this goes on top. Okay, it's done. The bowl is super fucking hot. But basically this softens the apples to resemble kind of like the inside of an apple pie or an apple cobbler or something. I don't know. It is so good. And obviously because it's so hot right now, I give this like a solid couple minutes before I add my whipped cream dollop, which is the best part. I also did one yesterday that had a few dark chocolate chips in it. Absolute fire absolute fire. Anyways, uh, that's it for me tonight. I want to rip these lashes off my face and continue on my reading journey for the evening, but I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I will see you guys soon. Bye guys.